In this Kogi tutorial, we'll go over different layering techniques to create masks using black and white content. Masking is a fun way to add versatility to your content by displaying it in new ways. Here we have a Kogi project set up with the following. Three clip synths inside of an aligner, one containing the content we will use as masks, and two layers for various clips. We also have our effect chains and a layer group containing three layers for each of our clip synths. Our layers are ordered as follows, black and white content on top, and our two other layers below. The rest of our interface is dedicated to the project info, preview, and main output windows. Now let's get into masking our visuals. The first technique involves using blend modes. First let's clear our layers by ejecting any content. Let's also remove effects and disable any effects chains in our layer group for a clean start. Let's trigger some black and white content to use as a mask from our black and white clip synth. Next, we'll trigger content for layers 1 and 2. Right now our output looks cluttered, especially because our black and white content has such a high contrast. Let's contain our layers 1 and 2 within a mask. In our layer group, simply change the blending mode of the black and white layer to multiply. Notice how our bottom layers are now contained within our black and white content, which acts as a mask. Now we can trigger any of our black and white content from our clip synth, and the combined layers will take the shape of that mask. This is a simple way to add variety to our live visuals and reuse existing content. The next technique will use an effect called Mask with Layer. In our effect chain, right click and in the effects menu, select Mask with Layer from the masking category. Enable it by clicking on its name. Under Mask Image, we'll select our black and white layer. Under our layer group, disable the black and white layer. Since the mask with layer effect uses the visual information behind the scenes, there's no need to have our black and white layer active. Enable the effects chain for layer one and notice that our mask is now active. Any content that is triggered on the black and white clip synth will be used from the mask with layer effect without the need to have it active as a layer. Any content triggered on layer 1 will take the shape of our black and white mask. What we can do now is mix various content from layer 2 with our masks. Let's trigger new clips on layer 2 and switch blend modes for different looks. Alternatively, we can enable our mask effects FX chain on layer 2 to have this content contained within the mask as well. The mask with layer effect gives us this flexibility. The final technique we'll show involves creating a mask overlay that sits above our other content layers using an alpha channel. Let's re-enable our black and white layer. First, let's remove all effects and turn off the effects chain on all our layers. On our black and white layer, change the blending mode to source over. This is so that it doesn't blend with the layers below it. Next we'll create an alpha channel on our black and white mask. We'll need to add the luma key effect to our mask effects effect chain. Right click and choose luma key from the masking category. Enable the effects chain on our black and white layer as well as the luma key effect. Increase the threshold parameter until all black is removed from our mask. Feel free to add softness if you're seeing hard edges on your mask. Now that our mask has an alpha channel, we can see that the white parts of our black and white content are visible, and all black is removed. The next step is to fill our mask with content. Right click and add the mask with layer effect to our effect chain and enable it. Decide which layer you would like to mask. For this example, let's go with layer 1. Choose layer 1 as our mask image and disable layer 1 in our layer group. As you can see, our black and white layer is acting as an overlay showing the content from layer 1. The alpha channel is preserved and all the content underneath is showing in transparent areas. Let's trigger some of our black and white content to show this in action. Notice that whatever content is triggered on layer 1 also takes the shape of our black and white mask. Any content triggered on layer 2 will now be obstructed by our mask. This effect can be especially useful when displaying logos. 
Let's trigger the Doc Optic logo from our black and white clip synth stored in Bank 2. Now we can display content inside of our logo that is acting as a mask for other layers. This is a nice way to add new looks to an otherwise simple white logo. We hope these techniques have given you ideas on how to use masks in your live visuals. There's always more than one way to do things, so continue to experiment and choose a method that works best for you. Visit our website DocOptic.com to try out these techniques yourself using some of our free black and white content, in addition to our other Kogi tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy triggering!